I first picked up the G36K, I wanted to build an accurate impression kit. So I went for the 2010 to 2013 KSK kit. Now, there are a lot of things that may look standard, but you have to be careful of when building a kit like that. The first thing you have to do is take off the G36K stock and put a G36C stock on. They did this for maneuverability reasons. I did it because it's accurate and maneuverability. It also helps a lot. Uh, that one to two inches really makes a big difference, so I like that addition. As we move forward, let's start with the top rail. So the top rail is the Bugatti.com KSK sight rail. This one is not the standard G36C1, it's not the one with the integrated sight, and it's not the new IDZ rail. It may look like it, but this one is actually different. It is raised, and it is full metal, and I did have a couple fitment issues. I couldn't get the screw hole in, but whatever, it gets the job done, and it puts my sight at a much more comfortable level. Height overboard, whatever, it's airsoft. We have a replica 552 EOTech on here that screws in, it's a little bit wobbly, but whatever. Again, it gets the job done. Very easy to sight in, very clear sight picture. We also have a rear and front MP7 sight that do have a night glow paint on them. Uh, don't really use that too much, but the sights do add not only that accuracy for the impression kit, uh, but they're good backups, or if I don't want to run my EOTech. Finally, we have a Magpul RSA sling mount. Not only does it secure to the mount very well and works well with my sling, it also is accurate for the impression. It is a little bit more Gucci, it's not the standard KSC one, but whatever, it gets the job done. So, if we look down here, we notice two things. That's not a standard G36K mag, and you'd be right. That is actually an old 2012 Magpul G mag. So this one did come out a while ago. It has been discontinued for licensing reasons, but if you can find these, I found this for a killer deal. They're some of the best performing and best feeding mags I've purchased, and to get a G36 one looks pretty cool. The other thing you'll notice is this is not the standard fire selector. Only two manufacturers put the standard fire selector switch markings on their G36. That'd be the Tokyo Marie Recoil Shock and the VFC G36 K Blast gas blowback. I'm not really able to afford either of those, so when I built my own, I actually used the dry transfer decal that's used for, for models, and I purchased them off of a hobby shop for about 20 bucks for a big set of letters for each. So this works beautifully. I've had this on, I've rubbed it. It doesn't come off whatsoever. As we move forward, you might see this looks pretty standard and you'd be right. However, it is accurate for the impression kit as well. I have a standard G36K slim handguard as opposed to the rail. I just think it looks a little bit better, uh, but that's just my opinion. I have a replica KAC foregrip, a G36K length rail, and a replica LLM01. It's a light laser module, has IR laser and light, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't really get to use the IR laser all that much, but whatever, it gets the job done. Uh, and it's got a decent lumen throw. It is a battery hog though, I will let you know that. Other than that, the only thing we have up front is an Ares direct purchase. Uh, I purchased them directly off their website and it is a four prong flash hider. You can get the KAC flash hider, which would actually be a little more accurate. However, this one is kosher for the kit. So I opted for it uh, because it fit my threads. I have 14 millimeter positive threads, which are a pain, but it gets the job done and it looks pretty accurate. Now let's move to the inside. So I have a ZCI balanced motor. It's a 16 TPA motor, and it's a fantastic motor, especially for trigger response, and the 18 to one gears I'm using. I'm using steel GMP 18 to one gears. I've used them for three years, and there are absolutely no signs of wear on them. Uh, that is due to my SHS shims, uh, and how I spent nine hours making sure it was perfect, but it works beautifully. Connected to that would be the SHS piston, which is a 14 and a half tooth, uh, steel, full metal rack piston. I love that thing. Connected to a piston head by SHS as well. Uh, the other compression parts, uh, the nozzle would be SHS double O-ring as well, but the cylinder and cylinder head are exactly the same. They worked beautifully with the setup I had. Perfect compression, so no complaints there. I have also attached a Matrix M115 spring. Again, it is just a little bit of a power upgrade compared to the M110 I initially had in it, but it works beautifully and no complaints there. I have a ZCI 6.02 barrel, uh, 363 millimeters, so it pushes out right to the end, and it, it's a fantastic barrel. It, it works perfectly, it's very inexpensive and cost effective too. Additionally, I have the Modify Flat Hop in here. I'm using the Flat Hop nub that I had to shave down quite a bit to get it to work, to not over hop the 0.28s I'm using. Uh, but otherwise, it, it works beautifully with the Elvish Tac R-Hop system. And overall, 
I'm pushing 200 feet, no problem. I should mention the biggest part of this gun. That would be the Gate Nano Hard MOSFET. So the Gate Nano Hard was purchased to protect the micro switch inside my gearbox. And it also had the debouncing feature to work with that to not fry anything. And that's what I love about this gun. The micro switch gives it a good trigger response, but the MOSFET pushes that to the next level. It bypasses the electronics directly to go straight to the motor, and I couldn't be happier with it. It did take a while to install into program, but on an 11.1, it functions beautifully. So that's definitely an upgrade I'd recommend, and that's what I threw in this gun. So internally, that's essentially all I've done. So we're going to test this out, plugged in the battery, got my full mag. I'm going to adjust the hop up, pause. Sorry guys about the audio, uh, the GoPro audio. For some reason, was being really wacky today. Uh, I'll just note here that I used uh, an 11 -1 from Turnigy, bought off of Hobby King with a Dean's connector, and Elite Force 0.28 gram bio BBs. The target we'll be shooting at is actually this one, which is a man-sized target made out of steel, so it gives a nice audible ting. About 150 feet away. every single time. Dare I say 200 feet? Let's see. Again, I'm shooting iron sights, so I'm gonna get a couple shots to track where I'm going. Don't even need it. Right over. Two birds pull out of for fun. And I'm out. Thing shoots beautifully. So Elvish Tack hop up actually really works well. Uh, I did have to do some tuning, had to cut the bucking down a bit, uh, but I definitely recommend it. This target is 200 feet away. The end of my yard is maybe 10 feet longer. As you saw in the video, some of these BBs actually sailed right over it, and I was hitting in this general area every time. So I'm easily getting 200 feet accurately. I bet I could push this thing to 250 no problem. We'll just have to see on the fields. Thank you guys for watching the video. Give it a like, comment, subscribe if you'd like. Uh, and tune in next time to Airsoft TC. This is Airsoft NCT, and I'll see you in the next video.